Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me here. I am honored to be given an opportunity to share this story with you. I'm sure my story has something for each and every one of you because what I'm going to tell you might impact your everyday life. I start from the beginning, my beginning. I was born in India in a very loving and caring family, a family who stayed together. By that, I mean we were a group of about 20, 25 people who lived in the same house and basically just chilling in life. Aunts, uncles, their kids and their kids. So basically everyone. And I was the youngest in this family. Being the youngest in such a family has its perks. I was that pampered kid. For us, education wasn't the highest priority. But competition, on the other hand, definitely was. My father often told me, you could be a chef for all I care, but all I want from you is that you be the best at what you do. Being such a family person, I know what hurts a family the most is losing their loved ones. So obviously, my first priority or my first career choice was to become a firefighter. With being kind of tiny, it would not have worked out. So instead, I became a biologist to fight intellectual fights against the suffering and death of our loved ones. Every year, 18 million people die due to cardiovascular diseases. These include everything from cerebrovascular diseases to stroke. But most of them have one thing in common, calcification. Now, the easiest way to understand calcification would be to imagine painting a sheet of absorbent paper over and over. There would be a point where there would be more paint than paper. The paper would become so stiff and it would not want to move at all. There would be paint on the paper, in the paper and probably all over you too. This is what happens in the <coughs> blood vessels as well. Over the years, the blood carries calcium around in your body and it gets deposited in and on the vessels. The calcium that is deposited on the blood vessel is known as intimal calcification, while the one which is deposited in the blood vessel is known as medial calcification. Now, intimal calcification, which is the one which is deposited on the blood vessel, leads to blockages of vessels and it can be dealt with. In the worst case scenario, we can use a stent, which is a small metal tube which ho holds open the blood vessel again. Medial calcification, on the other hand, is not so easy to deal with because we cannot use stents in this case. In some cases, using stents in such a case can even lead to vessel rupture. So that is how I came to my research topic, prevention of calcification in blood vessels. My team thought that if something is going wrong in the body, it should potentially involve hormones. And because glands are what secrete hormones, we narrowed down to adrenal gland and we chose it to study it further. These are these small triangular glands which are present on top of kidneys. We took adrenal gland extract and fractionated it based on its ability to interact with solvents. Further, we checked each of these fractions to check whether it could affect calcification. How did we do that? We have cultured human aortic smooth muscle cells and rat aortic rings. We incubate these in calcification inducing medium with or without the test fractions. Then we check how much calcium is deposited in these models and the fractions which could show an effect either an increase or decrease 
in the calcium deposition, we took further and we fractionated them again and checked each of the fractions again. We repeated this process till we narrowed down on one mediator, which could affect calcification. Now this sounded really, really complicated, right? This is the important part. We actually found out one mediator which could reduce calcification in our models. We named this factor calcification blocking factor. What does this mean? How can this affect you? This means that in the near future, there is a very high probability that when a patient goes to a doctor, the doctor could simply carry out a blood test and tell the patient whether or not he is at risk for vascular calcification, cardiovascular disease, cardiorenal syndrome, and so on. Currently, what doctors basically do to identify medial calcification without performing a biopsy or a very complicated scan is to measure blood pressure. By the time we see an effect on the blood pressure of an individual, it is already too late. There is already too much calcification. Now this could change. I was really, really happy with this result and I went to my professor. I told him everything. He listened to me, he smiled, and then he told me, that is a superb result, but your workload doubles now. We needed to find out a smaller part of this mediator which did the real job. We needed to find this out because a small enough mediator can be used as therapy. Nothing toxic, nothing foreign, just something that your body produces but is unable to produce anymore. So we help a little from the outside. Keeping this in mind, we synthesized smaller parts of CBF and tested them to see if they could affect calcification like its bigger parent. And this worked. We found a smaller part which could work way better than the parent peptide. That was good news. At the same time, my lab and I work on finding more mediators of calcification. This is because once we know all the mediators of calcification which are present in human blood, we could do a blood test and pinpoint for each individual which mediator is causing calcification and work with that. I am a researcher and I have a dream. I am a researcher because I believe in my dream. More often than not, we treat diseases when it is too late. More often than not, we are treating the symptoms or manifestations of a disease. More often than not, we are doing damage control rather than prevention. I dream of a prevention-based treatment regime. And this is what I shared with you today, why it is not so far in the future as we assume it to be. This is something each one of us can be happy about. This is the reason I'm glad I chose the path of research. This is the reason I'm glad I moved here, leaving so much behind, but finding so much more for so many more people. I am glad for the ITN IntriCare, which gave us an opportunity for 15 young scientists to come together, pool their ideas to really solve this problem. I chose research because it is not a monotonous job where you do a fixed set of things, carry out protocols, and do limited stuff. But research challenges you every single day to think out of the box. It challenges you to be a critical thinker, a problem solver, a problem maker, and a caretaker. Oh, the cells require a lot of care. Even right now, a part of my brain is thinking, are my cells okay back in the lab? Chromatographic machines are a different story altogether. What I mean to say is that research pushes you to play every possible role. It is a profession where everything is possible, 
because basically we are just studying nature and nature never fails to surprise us. We are working to keep hearts beating in the healthiest ways possible. And we are close to achieving our dreams. So live your life the best you can for yourself and your loved ones. This was Shruti Bhargav signing off. Thank you for your attention.